In the 2020 release, Civil 3D introduced the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS, allowing users to directly connect GIS layers into the Civil 3D environment. While this tool was a tremendous time saver, there were limitations on the allowable object types and their stylization. Today, using Civil 3D 2024, we have much more control over content brought in from ArcGIS Online. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by logging in to ArcGIS Online so we can take a closer look at the geospatial data that we'll be working with. When I log in, I'm going to choose Content. This is where my custom content is stored. And this project is in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I've created a folder for that, so I will choose that folder. And from here, I'm going to open up a web map. Now, a web map is nothing more than a container that allows us to view multiple geospatial layers at one time. You can see the geospatial layers that I've created. I've created them from shapefiles, and the web map simply brings them all together into one environment. I'm going to click to select that web map, and then I will click to open that on screen. When the web map comes up, we can see the geospatial data here. These are the layers over on the left, and I can turn these on and off by clicking these eyes. So if I turn this on, we can see the floodway. I've got some lot line geometry and some ponds. Okay, so that's how it works. This is the data that I'm interested in. I would like to connect this data to Civil 3D. Let's jump over to Civil 3D, and I'm in a brand new drawing. I'm going to assign a coordinate system for this. I can do that on the settings tab. If I right click on the drawing name, I can choose edit drawing settings. And I happen to know the coordinate system code for this. It's AR83-NF. This is Arkansas NAT83 North Zone US foot. I'll click OK. Now to connect to that geospatial data, I will go to the insert tab and I'll choose Autodesk connector for ArcGIS. When I do, this will log me right into the ArcGIS Online environment, and I can select my area of interest. Now, I could put Fayetteville, Arkansas in here, but that's kind of a large target. Instead, I have an address that I can use, and since I have a terrible memory, I'm just going to copy this from my notepad, and I will paste it up here. I'm looking for that address in Fayetteville, Arkansas. There it is. I'll back up and then I will click this middle icon to define my area of interest. When I'm finished, I will come over and choose content and ArcGIS Online will show me any geospatial content I have in this area. I will then click to open that same web map that we looked at a second ago. From here, we can see all of the geospatial layers that I have. I can display them by clicking the eye. So here's my easements. I would like to bring the easements into my file, so I will choose that toggle. And then let's select the feature type. When I open this up, notice that we can now import data as AutoCAD entities. Prior to 2024, if I was bringing data in through the connector for ArcGIS, I had to import this data as Civil 3D objects. We know that geospatial layers are points, lines, or closed shapes. So bringing in lines, for instance, I would have to make these entities alignments or feature lines. I had no other choice. Now with 2024, we can leverage the AutoCAD entities. So I can bring in my data, depending on type, as AutoCAD points, polylines, or polygons. I'm going to insert these easements as polylines. Let's bring in the lot lines as well. And I'll bring these in as polylines. And then I'm going to bring in the floodway. Let's click to view that on screen. I'll import that and we'll bring this geometry in as feature lines. So we don't have to grab them all. We'll bring in these three geospatial layers and I'll click add to my design project. In Civil 3D, this will bring up the import layers dialog box. This is where I will build a template. Since I'm bringing in data, I can assign stylization to it. The template allows me to reuse that stylization in the future. At the top of the dialog box, there is a gear. If I click this gear, we can select our active folder. By default, the active folder is located under your login, under App Data, Autodesk, Civil 3D 2024, ArcGIS Import Settings. You can set this active folder any place you like. You could put it on your network if you want to, if you'd like to share your templates with other users. For this example, I'm going to create a new template. I will call this Fayetteville Demo. For template path, you can see that it's saving it in that ArcGIS import settings folder. 
At the top of the dialog box, we can see a series of tabs representing the available object types that we can create when we import our geospatial data. Two of my layers are going to be brought in as AutoCAD objects. So I'm going to select that tab. And if I was to do nothing and just come down and click OK, it would import those geospatial layers using the default settings. Now, I don't want to do that. I would like to stylize these. So I will click Add to create a custom setting. I can name the setting by double clicking and I will call this lot geometry. Now I can choose the source layer that I'm interested in. I'll double click and I think that was called lot lines, but you know what? I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I can't click here and see the source layers. Let me backspace this out. A shortcut that we can use if I click in this query field, if I open up the property source, I can see my layer names here. So I will drag across this, copy that to the clipboard, and then we'll go back to source layer and I will paste. We'll talk about query and priority in just a second. Since these objects are coming in as polylines, I'm going to assign a layer for these. And I will come down to the existing lot line layer. Let's create another setting for the easements. I'll double click. We'll call this easements. For the source layer, now I can use a shortcut. I know this layer starts with EASE. If we want, we can use asterisks as wild cards. Just note that the text is case sensitive. Let's move down to layer and we'll put this on EX easement. Finally, I had one more GIS layer that I was going to bring in as feature lines. Let's click add. This was flood geometry, so I'll call the setting flood. Source layer, I believe, was called Floodway, but I'll use the trick here. We'll click under Query. There's the layer that was designated as Feature Lines. I'll copy that to my clipboard, and we'll paste this down here. Since I'm bringing in Feature Lines, I can assign a Feature Line style. Once I choose my style, I can also assign an object layer. I can pick a site. I can even come down to feature type. If I open this up, I can mix things up and say, you know what? I changed my mind. I'd like to bring this content in as 2D polylines or 3D polylines. Let's leave it as feature lines for right now. And I will choose OK. At this point, I can save my template. Templates are stored in that active folder as a JSON file. I'll click Save and then Import. Now, as that data is brought in from ArcGIS Online, it's compared against my template settings and stylized accordingly. If I zoom in and hover over this geometry, I can see this is a lot line. It's on the EX lots layer. If I select this polyline and come over to the properties palette, if I go to extended data, you can see that all of the attribution has come along as property set data. Let's press escape. We'll zoom in and take a look at the easements. If I hover, we can see this geometry as on layer EX easement. And if I select it and go to the properties palette, we can see its attribution here. Now I'm kind of obsessive compulsive. I'm going to right click and choose select similar to grab all of the easements. And on the properties palette under design, I am going to turn on my line type generation. Just the dashes look a little bit better in these curves. Finally, I brought in my floodway geometry. We can see these are feature lines and they are using the appropriate style. What we've seen so far is a fantastic improvement on this feature. We can actually take things even farther. As this data came in, I stylized it based on the layer. We can also stylize our content based on its attribution. Just for a second, I'm going to jump back to ArcGIS Online. I have a layer called Fence. If I zoom in, we can see the fence geometry. So single layer, if I select one of these objects, we'll find that it has an attribute called Type, and it's assigned the value of Chain Link. If I click this one, this one's assigned a value of Split Rail. And this one is assigned a value of barbed wire. I would like to bring this geometry into my file and stylize it based on its type. Let's go back to Civil 3D. I will click to bring back the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS. And you can see it remembers the previous location. Let's go back to My Content. I'll choose my web map. Let's choose to import the fence layer. We can see that on screen. I would like to import this data as, I, I could do polylines if I wanted to, but I happen to have feature line styles for these fence types. So I'm going to bring it in as feature lines. And then I'll come down and choose add to my design project. In the dialog box, 
I can open this menu to see any previous templates that I've made. I'm going to add this setting to my template. So I'll choose this previous template and I'll click Edit. I'd like to import this data as feature lines. So when I select that tab, you can see the previous setting there. Let's create some new settings. I'll choose Add. And for the setting name, we'll call this FNC Chainlink. For the source layer, can't remember. Let me click Query. There we go. It's Fence. I'll copy that to my clipboard and then we'll paste it here. And in this case, I don't want to stylize these objects based on the layer. I'd like to stylize them based on their attribution. So I'm going to click in the Query field. And my property source is the fence layer. Let's click Add. The property that I'm interested in is Type. And the Type equals Chain Link. Let's click OK. I can then assign a style. I'll choose my Chain Link style. I can also assign an object layer, site, or type. I'm going to keep the defaults here. Let's click to create another setting. FNC Split Rail. I'll hit Tab, and for the source layer, I'll type Fence. Let's click in the Query field. In this case, I'm interested in the type property equaling Split Rail. I'll click OK. And then I will set the style for that one. Let's do one more. Add, we'll call this FNC Barbed Wire. Using the Fence Source layer. And then in the Query dialog box, I'm interested in the type equaling. Now, I wish I could click in the value field and see all of the available values. Unfortunately, that's not possible. One thing you can do as a workaround, if I come back down to ArcGIS Online, I can steal the values from here. And then I can jump back to Civil 3D and paste. Note that I'm not limited to a single query. If I click Add, this is where the operator comes into play. I'm looking for this and this, or this, not this. The toggle on the left is used to delete items, so I'm going to select that and hit Delete for right now. Let's click OK. This is going to be a barbed wire fence, so we will select the barbed wire style for that. One more thing, notice there is a priority column. In the event the data you're bringing in conforms to multiple settings, this priority value controls who wins. If you double click, you can change this to a different number. In this case, I don't have data conforming to multiple, so I'm just going to leave those at one. And then I will come down and click OK and import to connect to that data. Let's zoom in. And when I do, you can see that I have three fences coming from a single geospatial layer, and each one is stylized based on its attribution. As you can see, Civil 3D 2024 gives us much more control over the content brought in from ArcGIS Online. By taking advantage of these new options, along with the template feature, it's now easier than ever to incorporate GIS layers into the Civil 3D environment.